8th grade life science. A look into modern genetics. Did Mendel know about DNA? No, people did not understand that DNA is our hereditary material until long after Mendel's time. Our modern understanding of DNA and chromosomes helped to explain how Mendel's rules worked. Modern Genetics Mendel laid the foundation for modern genetics, but there were still a lot of questions he left unanswered. What exactly are the dominant and recessive factors that determine how organisms look? And how do these factors work? Since Mendel's time, scientists have discovered the answers to these questions. Genetic material is made out of DNA. It is the DNA that makes up our hereditary factors that Mendel identified. By applying our modern knowledge of DNA and chromosomes, we can explain Mendel's findings and build on them. In this concept, we'll explore the connections between Mendel's work and modern genetics. Traits, genes, and alleles. Recall that our DNA is wound into chromosomes. Each of our chromosomes contains a long chain of DNA that encodes hundreds, if not thousands, of genes. Each of these genes can have a slightly different version from individual to individual. These variants of genes are called alleles. Each parent only donates one allele for each gene to an offspring. For example, remember that for the height gene in pea plants, there are two possible factors. These factors are alleles. There is a dominant allele for tallness, donated with a capital, and a recessive allele for shortness, shown with a lowercase letter. Genotype and Phenotype Genotype is a way to describe the combination of alleles an individual has for a certain gene. For each gene, an organism has two alleles, one on each chromosome of a homologous pair of chromosomes. Think of it as one allele from mom and one allele from dad. The genotype is represented by letter combinations such as capital and capital, capital and lowercase, or lowercase and lowercase. When an organism has two of the same alleles for a specific gene, it is homozygous, homo means the same, for that gene. An organism can be either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. If an organism has two different alleles, like an upper and a lowercase, for a certain gene, it's known as heterozygous, because hetero means different. Let's go over the different types of genotypes, their definition, and give examples for each. So the word homozygous, that means that you've got two of the same allele, either both capitals or both lowercase, like capital T, capital T, or lowercase t, lowercase t. Heterozygous means you have one dominant allele and one recessive allele, so one capital, one lowercase. Homozygous dominant means you have two dominant alleles, so like you have capital T, capital T. Homozygous recessive means you have two recessive alleles, such as lowercase t, lowercase t. Phenotypes. Phenotype is a way to describe the traits that you can see, the physical appearance of the trait. The genotype is like a recipe for a cake, while the phenotype is like the cake made from the recipe. The genotype expresses the phenotype. For example, phenotypes of Mendel's pea plants were either tall or short, or they were purple-flowered or white-flowered. Can organisms with different genotypes have the same phenotypes? Well, let's look. What is the phenotype of a pea plant that is homozygous dominant for the tall trait? Well, it's going to be tall. What is the phenotype for a pea plant that is heterozygous? Well, it's also going to be tall. So then the answer is yes. Two different genotypes can result in the same phenotype. Remember, the recessive phenotype will be expressed only when the dominant allele is absent or when an individual is homozygous recessive. Different genotypes will lead to different phenotypes of an organism. All right, let's summarize what we've learned so far. Mendel's hereditary factors are variants of genes called alleles. 
genotype describes the combination of alleles that an individual has for a certain gene, while phenotype describes the traits that you can see.